Welcome to the channel rather dubiously called Rufio. I'm the best YouTuber in my street, a very average player who uses this platform to trick you into thinking I'm good at and capable of playing Yu-Gi-Oh on any kind of level at all. Before we get started, why don't you hit subscribe for me, even if it's not because you secretly enjoy bad content, but because you pity me. I need every bit of help I can get. Hi guys, welcome to Rufio. My name is Joe. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome aboard. If it's not, why have you come back again, you insane, insane, insane motherfucker? This channel is terrible and you're still here. Well, thank you very much in any case for checking in. We're glad to have you here in either scenario. Today, we're going to take a look at Salaman Grade. The idea here is to give you a very understanding of the fundamentals behind the deck, a very solid basis for the basics. We're going to give you a crash course on how to either play this deck or to play against this deck, depending on exactly what kind of thing you're going for here. There isn't a huge variety of different decks that use the Salaman Greats as an engine or anything like that. So there isn't a huge amount to talk about in terms of diversity, but there is a very, very solid and consistent engine that we are seeing topping event after event after event. And we are still seeing it every format, no matter how hard they get fucking mullered on the ban list. So we are going to talk about one of the best budget decks in the game today. Salaman Great is an archetype that debuted into the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG in Soul Fusion at the tail end of 2018, although the support provided at this stage was, at best, underwhelming. The real improvement came when we saw more support released as part of the Soul Burner structure deck in February 2019, which instantaneously invalidated most, if not all, previously printed support, and is arguably one of the most successful structure decks released into the TCG. The archetype is seen in Yu-Gi-Oh! Reigns and piloted by Teddy Hamilton, aka Soulburner. Salaman Great is a deck made up of fire cyburst monsters, which are all based on animals which are on fire, by the way, and mostly following a pattern of smaller animals in the main deck and bigger animals in the extra deck, although there's one or two that break this pattern as a whole. Salaman Great has seen several releases of support since their initial drop into the game, but have also been thwarted by the limited and forbidden list, seeing several direct hits since their release, but this is testament to how powerful the deck is as a whole. The deck has seen success on every level of the game since its release, topping and winning YCS tournaments even as recently as February 2020 in Utrecht, with Ryan Jabri along with others topping the event, including Donovan Berrio, Simon He, and more. We've seen the deck top and crush countless regionals since its release, but its biggest victory of all time came at the Yu-Gi-Oh! World Championship in 2019 in Berlin, where Koki Kosaka piloted the deck to a first place finish. To give you the full picture, the deck was used by no less than five of those in the top eight at that event. So what is it that makes Salaman Great so popular, and how is it played? The first thing to note is that the deck is very budget friendly on the whole. There can be expensive staples, but these largely aren't considered in the cost of a deck because for most players, they don't pick these up as they get each deck. And if you do, you should reconsider that mentality as you'll save money by keeping hold of them. This is a huge part of the deck's popularity. Even budget players can play the deck without the more expensive prints and use cheaper alternatives to the staples and still enjoy many of the deck's positive aspects. One of the big themes of Salaman Great's playstyle is that of reincarnation. This term even has crept in as an unofficial summoning mechanic used by players when using the Link Monster as material for another of its own name, gaining additional effects, something that we will cover in more detail later on. The deck has an uncanny ability to recur resources, whether it's bringing back monsters from the grave, adding cards back to the hand, shuffling them into the deck, or setting back spells and traps repeatedly and consistently. This ability to grind relentlessly and control the board is a huge reason for the deck's success and continued experimentation, even in the face of several formats of reprimands on the limited and forbidden list. The deck has a great balance. It has plenty of ways to keep control of the board, punishing the opponent and forcing them to waste resources, all whilst recurring its own. Eventually, it pushes the opponent down until it can move in for the kill. On top of this, the deck can successfully run on a relatively small engine, although this has gradually changed over time, but this allows for plenty of room for cards to be keeping the opponent at bay, including a deluge of hand traps and the like. It's worth noting that the deck doesn't necessarily need to move in for games slowly. We've seen countless times where the deck can quickly build up an opportunity to quickly move for an OTK, and being able to do both of these things is a key part of why the deck has been so good. 
As some final points before we continue, there are some weaknesses in the deck, an aspect that is very important for us to explore if we're to know the deck well enough to play or to defeat. The reliance on the graveyard is one of the largest potential weaknesses, meaning the deck is especially susceptible to lines of play that cause them to banish their cards, such as Macro Cosmos, Dimension Shifter and Dark Lore. The deck also relies, like many strong modern decks, on special summoning on a large scale, as well as monster effects to set up its plays. Anything that can thwart these can brutalise the deck. Floodgates such as skill drain, summer limit, there can be only one and the like, as well as well-timed interrupts from hand traps as an example, can absolutely cripple the deck's lines of play and stop it dead in its tracks. The deck does also rely fairly heavily on seeing Sanctuary quite early on to get the most out of their initial summons and seeing this taken from the board can be particularly troublesome for the deck to overcome. Next we're going to do a rundown of the Salaman Great cards and what they do and afterwards we'll take a look at some of the common extenders and techs for the deck. As a couple of notes just before we get started I'm only going to cover the cards worth playing in any kind of detail here. Salaman Great has seen an abundance of support and whilst that's great for giving us plenty of options it does also mean there is, to put this politely, some chaff that doesn't currently and likely won't see any play in the near future if ever at all. I'm also going to be covering most of these effects in brief and as such I won't be using the full correct text when talking through these cards. They will however be on the screen for your perusal so you can read the correct text. Although given that we're all Yu-Gi-Oh players we all know you won't be reading a fucking thing. So we're going to start off with Salaman Great Falco. If it's sent to the graveyard you can set a Salaman Great spell or trap from your graveyard. You can return a Salaman Great monster you control to your hand except for Falco to special summon this card from your graveyard. You can only use one effect per turn and only once that turn. Next up we have Salaman Great Foul. If a Salaman Great monster or monsters except Foul is special summoned to your side of the field, you can special summon it from the hand. This effect is a hard once per turn. You can send one Salaman Great card from your hand or face up on the field to the graveyard and target a set spell or trap your opponent controls. It cannot be activated this turn. We also have Salaman Great Foxer. So if you have three or more Salaman Great monsters in the grave, you can send this card from the hand to the graveyard, then target a Salaman Great Link monster in your graveyard and one card on the opponent's spell or trap zones. Return the targeted monster in your graveyard to the extra deck and then destroy the targeted spell or trap. If a card in the opponent's spell or trap zone is destroyed and sent to the graveyard whilst this is in the grave, you can special summon it in defence. You can only use one effect per turn and only once that turn. We have Salaman Great Foxy. When this card is normal summoned, you can excavate the top three and then add an excavated Salaman Great card to the hand and then shuffle the rest back into the deck. If this card is in your graveyard and there's a face-up spell or trap on the field, you can discard a Salaman Great card to special summon it, and then you can destroy one face-up spell or trap on the field. You can only use one effect per turn, and only once that turn. Next up we have Salaman Great Jack Jaguar. This card inflicts piercing damage. If you control a Salaman Great Link monster whilst this card is in your graveyard, you can return a Salaman Great monster from your graveyard to the deck except for itself and special summon this to a zone that Salaman Great Link monster points to. This effect is a hard once per turn. Next we've got Salaman Great Gazelle. So if a Salaman Great monster is sent to your graveyard except for Gazelle, you can special summon it from the hand. When it's summoned, you can send one Salaman Great card from your deck to the graveyard except for Gazelle. Each effect is a hard once per turn. We have Salaman Great Paro. When an opponent's monster declares an attack, you can special summon this card from your hand in attack position. If this card is special summoned, you can make this card's attack the same as one Salaman Great monster in your graveyard. You can also tribute this card to gain 2,000 life points. You can only use this effect once per turn. We have Salaman Great Spinny. If you control a Salaman Great card, you can discard this card, then increase a monster on the field's attack by 500 until the end of the turn. If you control a Salaman Great monster other than Spinny and this card is in the graveyard, you can special summon it, but banish it when it leaves the field. Each effect is a hard once per turn. And finally, we have Salaman Great Zebroid X. While it's in the graveyard, if a Salaman Great Link monster you control leaves the field because of an opponent's card effect, you can special summon two level 4 Salaman Great monsters from your graveyard, including this card, but negate their effects. And immediately after this resolves, XE summon a Salaman Great monster using only those monsters. You can only use this effect once per turn. It also has the additional effect that an Xyz summon monster using this card as a material gains 300 attack for each material attached to it. 
From these monsters, the most prominent are Falco, Fowl, Spinny, Foxer, Jack Jaguar, and Gazelle. The last of these being limited to one on the current limited and forbidden list. Zebroid X being extremely new, it's hard to know how much this will be adapted into the current and future strategies for the deck. Mole sees little to no play, as does Coyote. Foxy and Paro have seen some experimental play. Next up, we're going to take a look at the in archetype options for Salamangrate for the extra deck. One of these is not yet released into the TCG, but I figured it's worth covering so that you're aware of this support coming out in the future. Most of the Salamangrate extra deck monsters continue this theme of reincarnation, gaining additional effects when summoned using a monster of their same name as the material. The most commonly abused of these is that of Sunlight Wolf, but we'll get to that one shortly. We're going to start off with Salamangrate Baylinx. So it requires a level 4 or lower Cyburst monster. If it's Link Summoned, you can add a copy of Salamangrate Sanctuary from the deck to the hand. If a Salamangrate card or cards you control would be destroyed, you can banish this from the graveyard instead. Each effect is a hard once per turn. We also have Salamangrate Almirage. This requires one normal summon monster with a thousand or less attack. You can, quick effect, tribute this card, then target a monster you control. It can't be destroyed by an opponent's card effect this turn. When a monster you control is destroyed by battle whilst this card is in the graveyard, you can special summon this card. You can only use this effect once per turn. Following this, we have Salamangrate Sunlight Wolf. It requires two fire effect monsters. If a monster or monsters are summoned to a zone that this card points to, you can add a fire monster from your graveyard to the hand, but you can't normal summon or special summon cards of that name for the rest of the turn. During your main phase, if this card was Link Summoned using a Salamangrate Sunlight Wolf as material, you can add a Salamangrate Spell or Trap from the graveyard to your hand. Each effect is a hard once per turn. We also have Salamangrate Heat Leo. This requires 2 plus fire effect monsters. If this card is Link Summoned, you can shuffle a card in your opponent's Spell or Trap zone into their deck. Once per turn during your main phase, if this has been Link Summoned using Heatlio as a material, you can make one face-up monster on the field have the same attack as one of the monsters in your graveyard until the end of the turn. We also have Salamangrate Pyro Phoenix. This card also requires 2 plus fire effect monsters. If it's Link Summoned using another Pyro Phoenix material, you can destroy all cards your opponent controls, and you can use each one of the following effects once per turn. Target one Link Monster in your opponent's graveyard and special summon it to their side of the field. If a Link Monster is special summoned to the opponent's field, you can inflict damage to your opponent equal to its original attack. Next we have Salamangrate Mirage Stallio. This is an Xyz monster and requires two level 3 monsters. You can detach a material from the card to special summon a Salamangrate monster from the deck in defense position. Also, you can't activate monster effects for the rest of the turn except for fire monsters. If this XE summon card is sent to the graveyard as material for the link summon of a Salamangrate monster, you can return one monster on the field to the hand. Each effect is a hard once per turn. Next up we have Salamangrate Violet Chimera. It requires one Salamangrate monster and one link monster. If it's fusion summoned, you can gain attack equal to half of the combined original attack of the materials used for its summon until the end of the turn. Once per battle during damage calculation, if it battles a monster whose current attack is different to its original, you can double this card's attack during damage calculation only. If it was fusion summoned using another Violet Chimera as material, monsters it battles have their attack reduced to zero during damage calculation only. Lastly, I wanted to cover a Salamangrate Extra Deck monster released only in the OCG at this stage, and although it doesn't have a confirmed release date for the TCG yet, it will hopefully be released soon enough. The monster we're discussing is Salamangrate Blaze Dragon. It requires two level 4 monsters. If it would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can detach one material from this card instead. During the battle phase, if it has no material, quick effect, you can special summon from your extra deck one Salamangrate Xyz monster by using this face-up card you control as material. This is treated as an Xyz summon, and you transfer its materials to the summon monster. You can only use this effect of Salamangrate Blaze Dragon once per turn. If this card is Xyz summon using a Salamangrate Blaze Dragon as material, you can destroy one monster your opponent controls. From these extra deck options, Baylink, Sunlight Wolf, and Heatlio see by far the most play. Violet Chimera sees some experimental play, it's particularly devastating in the mirror match, although most players prefer a more versatile and easier to summon OTK button, such as Borosaur Dragon. 
Pyro Phoenix doesn't see much play either, but that's something according to taste. Rather ironically, Al Mirage sees considerably less play in Salaman Great than it does outside of the deck. Mirage Stalio is, at this point, banned in the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG, something that I would argue is unnecessary, but the deck did need to be hit in some capacity, and this seems to have helped. We also don't yet know how much play Blaze Dragon will see in the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG. We're now going to discuss some of the in-archetype spells and traps that Salamangre have available to them, and again we're going to gloss over anything that is, frankly, useless. Because much like the monsters, there's plenty of waste products here, and the length of this video would just double by covering all of those too. We're going to start off with Burning Draw. This card is always treated as a Salamangre card. If your opponent has more monsters than you, you can target a link monster they control and draw cards equal to its link rating. You can only activate Burning Draw once per turn and you can only summon fire monsters the turn you activate this card. Following that we have Fusion of Fire. It's also always treated as a Salamangrate card. You can fusion summon a Salamangrate using monsters from your hand and or either side of the field. This is a hard once per turn. We have Salamangrate Circle. You can either add a Salaman Great Monster from your deck to your hand, or you can target a reincarnated Link Monster you control. It is unaffected by monster effects this turn, except for its own. This is a hard once per turn. We also have Salaman Great Sanctuary. You can use a Salaman Great Link Monster as the entire material for the Link Summon of a monster of the same name. During damage calculation, if your monster battles, you can pay a thousand life points, then make that monster's attack zero, and then gain life points equal to its original attack. Each effect is a hard once per turn. Following on from that we have Will of the Salamangrate. During the main phase you can special summon a Salamangrate monster from your hand or the graveyard. You can send this card from the field to the graveyard then target a Salamangrate link monster you control that has been reincarnated and then special summon Salamangrate monsters from your hand and or graveyard in defense position up to that link rating. You can only use one effect per turn and only once that turn. We also have Salaman Great Rule. When a spell, trap, or monster effect is activated while you control a Salaman Great Link monster, negate and destroy that card. While this card is in the graveyard, if you reincarnation Link summon, you can set this card but banish it when it leaves the field. You can only use one effect per turn and only once that turn. Following on from that, we have Salaman Great Rage, which allows you to activate one of these effects. Send a Salaman Great from your hand or field to the graveyard to pop a card on the field. Target a reincarnation summoned Salaman Great Link monster, then destroy cards your opponent controls up to its link rating. You can only activate Salaman Great Rage once per turn. Most of the above see some degree of usage across a variety of builds, although Fusion of Fire largely only sees play in formats where a player can expect to see a large number of mirror matches. Burning Draw being very new hasn't yet left a mark on the format, so it's hard to know whether this will see significant play or not. Salaman Great Circle is limited on the TCG Limited and Forbidden list, but it is mandatory to include it in any Salaman Great deck. Next up we're going to cover some of the common techs and extenders, and overall common deck choices in the Salaman Great deck. The deck is relatively refined, so the choices on this list means that they can be quite repetitive. But the amount of cyber support that indirectly gives the deck options means that players do have a multiple other options that they can look to play and keep the deck a little more flexible. So we're going to start off by saying hand traps. Not so long ago, it was mandatory for Salaman Great players to main copies of Phantasme, but this has fallen out of favour with the change in Master Rule. One of the good things about Salaman Great is that because of the main engine being quite compact, you can play a large number of interrupts, which can differ from format to format. The point I make about Phantasme is that having a good number of options for this particular slot gives the deck a huge ability to combat other meta decks, swapping out hand traps with others to keep the deck competitive. You will commonly see the likes of DD Crow, Effect Veiler, Ash Blossom, and Infinite Impermanence main decked in Salamangrate. But again, this can be flexible based on a player's budget and their needs at any given tournament. We also have Lady Debug and Flame Buffalo. Lady Debug was a huge consistency card, which along with the Salamangrate Circle and Gazelle all got hit to one at some stage since the Soul Burner deck release. We've seen Lady Debug since then come back off the list, but during her hiatus as a superpower in the Salamangrate deck, Flame Buffalo stepped in and saw significant play, and both of these have become arguably the best and most important normal summons in the common Salamangrate deck. 
We also have Micro Coda, which saw a huge boom in play, particularly last format, but in a variety of different Salaman Grey builds, easily being able to dig into the deck for additional monsters or a copy of Cyanet Mining to get your plays moving along. Speaking of Cyanet Mining, it would be no Salaman Great list or discussion without mentioning Cyanet Mining. This one goes without saying. Ditch any card from your hand in a deck that abuses the graveyard, sounds great, and then add a level 4 or lower Cyburst monster from your deck to your hand. It must be nice. We also have Prohibit Snake, which offers an interrupt at a key time, it's searchable, and it adds recursion to the deck. We also have Call by the Grave. The deck is a little more susceptible to hand traps now with Gazelle being at 1, so we need to protect our plays to prevent interruption, and it's also just a solid good card in most formats. Next up we have the newly released Parallel Exceed, which is free link material that summons more copies of itself and, well, what's not to like? Oh, and it can make rank 4 plays even easier too. And lastly we have Pot of Desires. One thing that's insanely important in Salamangre is getting to a starter card in your hand. The hits to the deck over time have been designed to make this increasingly more difficult to do, and so Pot of Desires is a great make or break card. If you don't see the start in your hand that you'd like to see, you're probably going to lose anyway, and in the later game once you tutored out most important cards, you can dig deeper and get more options to push your plays forward. This list is, of course, not complete. There are plenty of other options for you to consider, and whilst we speak now, those options are changing all the time, but they will give you some idea of options that are currently proving popular and help you to build your deck, knowing that these can be key parts of your strategy. So that is all for today's video. Hopefully this has given you a really good insight into the deck, what it does well, what it does badly, what its strengths and weaknesses are, why it's had its fall from grace somewhat, and why we're still seeing it pop up here and there. Thank you very much again for checking in, guys. If you do want to see more of this kind of content, of course, you should hit subscribe so that you can see more in future. But maybe you want to see more of this type of thing, but maybe with a different deck or archetype. Well, check out the channel. We will have some others released by this time. But if there isn't something there that you do want to see me cover in this kind of detail, I'm more than happy to accommodate those requests. Drop them down in the comments and I'll see what I can do and see what I think is relevant. Of course, if you're on social media, you can find plenty of me out there. The links are in the description, particularly on Facebook where I'm really, really prominent and active. You'll see me sort of trolling around the groups, winding people up. That's, that's what I do. But of course, reach out to me on there so thank you very much again for checking in guys if you haven't already you should have taken a hint by now you should hit subscribe and i will see you in the next one thank you for watching hopefully you've enjoyed the garbage content i put together for you enough to hit subscribe and maybe even drop a thumbs up and a comment before you go be sure to check out the links in the description to help support the people who are making this channel a possibility thanks again for checking in and i'll see you in the next one